All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our virtual career day series with the Los Angeles Public Library. My name is Lynn Nguyen and I am the young adult librarian at Chinatown Branch Library. Today I'm here with my co host Jessica Levy. You'll see her out there in the window waving. Uh, we are so excited to have you here because we are celebrating National Library Week and we're highlighting some really amazing staff uh, here at the Los Angeles Public Library. Today, uh, we have four guest speakers from the Los Angeles Public Library here to share some tips, tricks, and provide you with some insight on how they got into their professions. Uh, we would like to extend our deep thank you. Okay, we would like to extend our deepest thanks to all of you for being here with us today. Uh, our guest speakers, the Library Foundation, and the Friends of the Chinatown Branch Library for their generous support. Before we begin, I would like to go over some housekeeping rules. Your microphones are already muted. So if you are here as a participant, please keep your microphones muted. Uh, at the very end, if you do have questions, you can type that into the chat box and our awesome team, Rosalind here will ask the question for you or uh, you can raise your hand and we can, uh, we'll be able to unmute you so you can ask the question live to our guest speakers. All right. <laughs> So uh, let me go ahead. So, uh, and also at the very end of the program, we do have, have a survey if you can, or if you are able to, please do take a moment to fill out that survey for us. We'll be linking that in the chat box. So with that being said, I would like, to all, I would like all of you to open up your chat box. All right. Ooh, yes. All right, hi friends. Okay, so your chat box. The question for today is what, do you think people at the library do? What do you think people at the library do? <laughs> so you can type that into the, uh, you can type that into the uh, chat box. All right, we have people that here that say they get their homework done. What do you think people, or what do you think library workers do at the library? Yeah, we, yeah. You see, read all day, <laughs> provide resources to the public keep re reading materials updated. These are all really, really wonderful. Organized books, talking all day. We do definitely talk all day. <laughs> Everybody here is so smart. Everybody has uh, so, uh, so many great suggestions. Co organizing community events. Yes, that's a big one and organizing community activities. We definitely do a lot of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, begin our interview here. Let me go ahead and pull that into the new window. All right, so uh, I'm going to start, I'm going to introduce you guys to all of our, uh, our guest speakers that we have here with us today. The first person we have here is Anita Kelly. Anita Kelly started her career in libraries as a summer reading club teen volunteer in 1996, which led to a job as a library page followed by library aid for the Yakavoni Library in Lakewood, California. It didn't take long before she fell in love with the idea of choosing librarian as her career. In 2001, she left the Yakavoni Library to join Literacy Ameri AmeriCorps and attend library school in Seattle, Washington at the University of Washington. Anita graduated with her MLIS in 2004 and managed to independent and managed an independent coffee shop called Diva Espresso until she was hired with the LA Public Library in 2006. Anita was lucky enough to land her dream branch at the San Pedro Regional Library where she has great mentors, supervisors and library patrons. So welcome Anita. Uh, another person, another guest speaker that I'd like to introduce you today is V. V Ha, v -ha uh, also known as Ha Tuk V, is the librarian three responsible for the Octavia Lab, the award-winning DIY makerspace and audiovisual space, uh, named for science fiction legend Octavia E. Butler, located at the Los Angeles Central Library. During non-COVID-19 times, <laughs> V runs the day-to-day -day operations of the makerspace, including training people in prototyping equipment and technology and inspiring the ethos that creativity is within reach. While the lab is closed due to COVID-19, V works on face shields for hospital workers and social justice 
uh, coloring pages. V is a second generation Vietnamese American and alum of Lincoln High School with a BA in American Studies from Pomona College and an MLAS from UCLA. So welcome V. <laughs> All right, we got two more. Salvador Sosa Prieto. Uh, so Salvador is a native Spanish speaker born and raised in Mexico where she completed her studies. After a career in computer administration, she moved to LA in 2017 where she began a new chapter at the Robertson branch of the Los Angeles Public Library. She was hired through the Targeted Local Hire program in 2020 and became a full-time uh, fledged uh, administrative clerk with the library. Woo, go Salvador. <laughs> and then we have our last guest speaker here, Aldrich Litton, also known as Al, is an administrative clerk at the Los Angeles Public Library. He received his MLIS degree from the San Jose State University's online program and hopes to work as a librarian in the near future. So welcome, Al. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over to Jessica. Thank you, everybody. Great, thanks everybody. Thanks, Lynn. So I want to start off, we just got some great int introductions, but I'd like to hear from each of you. Can you just each please tell us briefly um, which library you're currently working with and in what department and how long have you worked for the Los Angeles Public Library? So let's start with Anita. So um, I've been at the San Pedro Regional Branch um, here in San Pedro, um, and I've been there since 2006, so 14 years. And you're a children's librarian. Yeah, I'm a children's librarian. Great. Have you always been children's librarian? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I was Wonderful. meant to be. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. And V? I don't remember. Um, so I started out as a computer aid in the Chinatown branch. And then I went into library school as a computer aid, worked as a administrative clerk at the El Sereno branch, promoted there to become a teen librarian over at Lincoln Heights came to Teenscape, did a lot of collection development work there, picking comic books, graphic novels for teens, and then coming to the Octavia Lab to run the makerspace. So there's a lot to talk about. Wonderful, thank you. How about Al? Um, so I am an admin clerk at the Art and Music Department at Central Library. I started as an MC at the Robertson branch and I was there I was doing like 15 hours per week which is like barely making ends meet I was struggling for a long time <laughs> actually but um yeah I'm an, I'm an admin clerk now hoping to be a librarian soon congratulations on completing your MLIS thank you and Salvadora hello everyone I've been an administrative clerk at the Robertson branch library for almost what else two years and six months. I started as a training and then on 2020, I, I started as an administrative clerk. Wonderful, thank you all. And now I wanna ask what drew each of you to want to work in a public library and maybe how did you end up working at the library? So let's start with V. Um, I ended up doing it because as a computer aid, there was a scholarship program to pay to get, to get you into library school with the Urban Library Council. And I think also uh, there was a spectrum scholarship as a person of color. We need people of color to come into librarianship. And so with those two uh, scholarships, I ended up becoming a librarian and just pretty much stayed at LAPL. Gotcha. Al, how about you? Yeah, I kind of fell into it. I had just graduated from college. I needed a job. My brother and sister both worked for the library and they're like, hey, I think they're hiring for MCs. You should check it out, whatever. Um, but um, it was the first job that I actually loved. I've, I've had many jobs. Um, and that was the first one where I was like, oh, I can, I can see myself doing this for, for a while. Um, but sh actually shortly after I started as an MC, uh, as a messenger clerk, um, the examination for the administrative clerk was being offered. So I took that exam, which is like this arduous hour, two hour long. It's you, you're, you're asked math questions, vocabulary, a ton of stuff. It's actually much more difficult to, I think, take the administrative clerk exam than it is to um, interview to be a librarian. Like that is so much easier compared to that. Um, 
Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Did I answer the question? I can't remember. Yes. And I have another question for you. So you already went through one hurdle, uh, the first hurdle going from MC to ad administrative clerk. And maybe mm -hmm. we can clarify what that means to our audience because they may not know all the intricacies of what the different jobs are. Yeah. Um, and to be, what made you decide to pursue the MLIS to become a librarian? Yeah, so um, like a messenger clerk, you have different tasks. I think it, it kind of varies a little bit from branch to branch. Um, and even at the central library, they're all a little bit different, but you're generally um, shelving books. That's like your main task. Um, you have less hours at, at, at maximum, you can work 20 hours per week. Um, so it's really it's really great for like for teens or uh, for anyone who's just trying to get like their foot in, in, in the door and kind of start getting familiarized with like the library system and how it works and like the day to day operations. Um, an administrative clerk has a lot more tasks. You're working 40 hours per week. So it's like it's a full time job. Um, you are dealing with the public a lot. You um, are stationed at the desk where people come to check out books or sign up for library cards or pay their fines. Um, and you also do like various other tasks inside the office, like processing books, mending books, um, and also helping librarians with their own programs and their own projects. Um, I, what, what inspired me to, to pursue my MLIS degree was, I, again, just, this was like the first job that I actually enjoyed doing. Um, and like <laughs> the reference desk, which is where the librarians are stationed, was like right across from where I was. And I was like, I can definitely do that job. Like <laughs> they like they're having a great time and I can definitely do that. And I'll be here at least two or three years um, more. So I so I decided, well, I'll just start start my MLIS degree while I'm here since I'm since I'm already doing the I'm already doing the work. And hopefully, you know, after that time I'll be able to to be a librarian. Yeah, that's pretty much um, that's pretty much how it worked. Wow, thank you for sharing all of that information. Um, so again, there are two types of clerks in the library, the messenger clerk, or we call them MC or administrative clerks or ACs. Um, so the messenger, the MCs fo typically focus on shelving, that's the primary um, role, but they can also assist with things like answering phones and helping out checking out books for patrons. And then the administrative clerks are, as Al said, the people you usually see up at um, a desk when you go to check out books. And okay, so thank you, Al, for clarifying all that. And now, Anita, what about you? What drew you to the library? Um, well, volunteering at the library was um, on a suggestion from my mom because I used to work at a sporting goods store in the mall and I would get my paycheck and I'd spend it um, as soon as I cashed it at the mall. And so she's like, work in the library because then you can't buy books. I love to read, but she's like, then you can't buy books. So I, I did, I went to go volunteer in the library and then got a job there. Um, but the reason why I decided to become a librarian is because um, I'm kind of nosy. And I realized that the public library is a place where you can see people at all like stages of, of their life. And so I figured if I worked in a library branch for like 30 years, I could see who these little cute toddlers become. And that idea just like really intrigued me. And so um, my background, my BA was in anthropology. And so I love that that aspect of it of like people watching. And so that's that's actually why I became a librarian, not because I love to read, even though I do. Um, and also because I love to help people. I wanted to like have um, some kind of impact on shaping who these little kids become, because that's that's important to me. So um, that's why I became a librarian. And then as far as pursuing my um, MLIS, I went to library school, um, frankly, because I couldn't work my way up to becoming a librarian. I had to get a library degree in order to become one um, because I would have happily worked um, at the library for 10, 20 years, um, well, maybe not 20 years, but maybe 10 years to work my way up to librarian, um, but that was impossible. So I got my degree. Thank you. And Salvadora, what brought you to the library? She's muted. You can unmute yourself. Okay. Um, I ended working at the library because when I moved to Los Angeles, I knew about libraries in my country, but when I moved to LA, my husband introduced me to the library world. And he told me about the, all the resources that the library has for free for all Angelinos. Then 
I went to a word source where I I received an orientation to look for a position by Target a local hire program, and I applied for it, and then I got hired for the library department. It was pretty much why I am at the library, but that was something that I was looking for to work at the library. Got it. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. So um, I think we'd like to hear a little bit about what each of you um, experience in your day to day activities and maybe what um, if, if not projects or other work that you do that really inspires you in your job and it can be from during the pandemic or prior to that when we were in what's more traditionally recognized as public library work. Um, so I'd love to hear from each of you if you want to share what it is that you've been working on that you really enjoy so um salvador is it too soon do you are you ready yes i'm answer? ready well what is the what is the question what so what like? projects are there any projects that you've been working on this year or prior to the pandemic is fine too any projects that you have worked on that you've really enjoyed um that you found meaningful that you want to share with us sure since the pandemic started uh, my duties changed a little bit because I was working from home and I started working in the social media project. I've been part of it, creating posts and posting on Instagram and on Facebook. Then I joined to the virtual volunteering recognition event to be part of it. Also, I am an ambassador for the leadership team and I am working with the literacy, other literacy coordinator. And we plan to have a class for a month. So I am not sure if it is going to be on June or July. It is going to be a project to teach Spanish classes for beginners. Beginners, so I hope you can join us. So that's great. Is it Salvador the a literacy project? Um, is that yeah. something that uh librarians you typically i believe it's libra like librarians who are working on that or how do you get involved in that project the other literacy coordinator of my branch invited me so that is a really good project because it is called uh, students can teach as well and i am an esl uh, an english uh, as a second language student. So I decided well learning in that class with another classmate. That's wonderful. I just want to point out that we have so many amazing staff um, working with the LA Library. Just because someone's not a librarian doesn't mean they don't contribute to the amazing programming. So I just want to highlight that it sounds like, especially if you have initiative and, or interest in doing a program like that, then you have a lot of opportunity uh, to do it. So yeah. thank you. Thank you. And Al, how about you? Um, yeah, so I, I do want to, I, I think like the very, like at, at the library at LAPL, we're, we're starting to see like a very real change in the infrastructure, like system wide. When, when I first started, I think I started like five or six years ago, I can't remember, probably like five and a half, something like that. Um, everything was was really separated and all, but but uh, just as as a, as a really quick note, I also want to mention that every branch and even the central library, they all have like their own culture, um, like their own way of kind of doing things. There is some leeway, um, but as a whole, I felt like there was a very clear separation between the tasks that each like the MC, like the messenger clerk could do versus like the AC versus like the librarian. And with COVID has been really, really terrible, but for, for us, for, for some of us, it's, it's also afforded us, afforded us the opportunity to, to do things that we normally wouldn't, wouldn't have the time to do. Um, just because when you're at an actual location, physical location, you have so many tasks that you have to complete for that day, that there isn't enough time to sort of pursue these other programs that are usually not designated for your particular um, job, right? Um, so I've been I've been able to to run a few different programs. Um, I've been running a uh, biweekly, a bi bimonthly film discussion with two librarians, um, which before which, which would we just wouldn't have time to do. Um, I'm also running um, 
like a weekly art program. It's kind of like studio art hours or whatever. And we, we've, we've had like, I, I feel like really great success. And I, and I measure that by the number of people who are um, patrons versus like number of people who are participating who are other like library workers and stuff. Um, and and uh, yeah, um, I'm excited that I'm able to do all these things. I'm also like Salvador helping work with our, like I'm in charge of like the social media stuff for our, for our department. And I'm just like, I don't know, I've, I'm, I've gained so much more experience in like the past year than I think I would have gained had things continued as normal. So uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else I should say, but uh, well, that's great. Yeah, like, those pro those programs sound really great. If anybody has any questions about any of the programs, if we're not explaining the, the intricacies of the library programming, um, then please feel free to type it in the chat. One thing um, when I'm talking to people who don't work in the library and I say we do programming, they may instantly think it's um, coding or computer programming. So just to clarify, programming when we in the library terms is hosting events like this or putting on any programs. And sometimes they do include coding programs, but um, just wanted to make that clear. So thank you. And uh, V, what about you? What projects are you working on? Um, currently, right now, we are making face shields, which is what I've been fussing around back here. Um, because I run a maker space, that's open to the public that pretty much in non-pandemic times you would be as library card holders able to use this space not this space this is i'm in a separate spot spot in the library i didn't think to sit in the cool part of the octavia lab um and there you would be able to use you know 3d printers there's a recording studio there's all this technology that you get to use right now as we're closed we're trying to make use of space time talent so We've been doing face shields. So pretty much we've been pretty much partnering with community members, trying to find out, you know, learning a lot about how hospitals work and trying to get prototypes approved. And we've been making, I think we're right now like 40,000 face shields to 27 local hospitals. So that's been a big something we're very, very proud of. Um, and one of the other cool things we've been doing because what the social justice coloring pages is that basically what we've been doing is that part of, you know, in response to Black Lives Matter and discovering that, you know, representation of the community, we want it to actually, you know, bring a little bit more local history to light. So we've been doing a lot of research and, you know, learning how to start your own small business, all sorts of learning how to use the software. We've actually started, published our own little coloring book. We can talk more about that later if you guys have questions about that. Uh, but do you want to use this opportunity to just mention your coloring book, special coloring book giveaway? If you're a teenager, fill out that survey. And with it, you get this wonderful, wonderful 34 page coloring book and learn about um, such wonderful things as the activism of the El of, of hold on, Lewis McAdams and the LA River. You know, that, I mean, it, what used to be a concrete bed that was purely for flood control is now becoming a nature preserve. How important is that? Um, we wanted to learn about the first uh, female City Librarian, Mary, Mary Emily Foy, and where the LAPL first located in the uh, Downey Block. This is a really cool coloring book. I am really fill out that survey. We're very, very excited to have you. And pretty much it's an interesting way of learning the history of, because not everybody gets a newspaper article, not everybody gets a book, but all of us kind of have family members who've chosen to do the right thing. You know, it just takes one person. Okay. That's Thanks, V. And that survey, you guys can wait till the end to fill it out. And we're going to be raffling off one coloring book, I believe, uh, to any teen who um, completes the survey. But we will not, uh, you have to wait till the end of the program to fill that out. So, and Anita, your turn. What projects are you working on? Um, I'll do pre pandemic because <laughs> I felt like um, this past year is just, I haven't been doing what I usually do. Um, but as far as um, you know, working in the branch, working in a, in a public library, we're answering questions from the public um, most of the time. Um, I would do programs. So for, since I'm a children's librarian, I would do story times or um, run after school programs. And, and I would just try to be creative with what we're offering to our families and to our patrons, um, just so that it's something that they get um, a benefit out of, but then also something that's 
enjoyable and interesting to them to make them actually come into the library. Um, I would visit schools and promote the library, go to community events um, to promote the library and all of our free resources. Um, I've spent years since I've, I've had the luxury of being at the same branch for so many years. I've built a lot of um, community relationships. And so um, kind of like using those relationships to create programs or just to um, get my foot in the door for places that I wouldn't ordinarily get my foot in the door to spread the word about the library. So it's um, it's a lot of that. And then of course you're run of the mill, like if there's a light out in the library and your boss isn't there, you, you have to call um, someone to have that fixed. So um, building management as well um, comes into play. And then of course, when there's problems that arise because they always do um, trying to use your problem solving skills um, to, to help solve that. And then I wouldn't say last but not least, but um, another thing we do is um, we manage our collection. So since I'm the children's librarian, all the children's books and children's materials um, I'm given a budget every year, and so I have to manage that budget and purchase books um, through a centralized source, but I have to choose what I think my community might need or want. Great, thank you. And uh, now a question for each of you. What would you say are some have been some of the most rewarding uh, aspects to your job, whether that's been a patron interaction or a project that you have worked on? So anyone who wants to start, I'll open that one up. I'll start. Um, I had this probably happen maybe two years after I started, but the first summer that I got to the library, this 14 year old girl walked up to me and she said, I'm Nancy, I'm, I'm a volunteer. And I said, okay, great. And so she was, yeah, she was about 14. And we just created this really cool like relationship that um, I went to her high school graduation. Um, I wrote recommendation letters for her to get into Georgetown. Um, and it was just like one of those very fulfilling um experiences that I had as a librarian that was kind of why I went into this because um you know I knew that I was helping her on her path and she was certainly like you know helping me because she was my volunteer um but just that has always kind of like stood out um as something that that's the reason why I became a librarian just to like help people and so I, I follow her in her career now she um she works I think right now she's in Mexico City working for some big accounting firm um and she's just she's very successful and it's just nice to see and um I like knowing that I had a little little part of that and so you still communicate with her on Instagram yeah yeah we're still in touch because that was years ago um that she first you know walked up to me and said I'm here to help and I mean it's just amazing to see um, who these people become in our community. Yeah. That's wonderful. Thank you. Who else wants to share something? Um, I have a story. So prior to be running the makerspace, the first makerspace here at LAPL, um, I used to be a teen librarian. And um, one of the things we do as teen librarians is we run a teen council. So all you teens out there, yes, I know what you're doing. And one of the things I like to do is I like to create projects and come up with ideas and things to do and I know that teens are hungry and every single time we would get together as a group is like V can we go get pizza today and I said this is this and and that and we're like fine but you guys have to fundraise for it so we decided to make these little miniature book ornaments we you know we you know we, we fundraised made made a whole bunch of money get her you know it was ready to buy our pizza and this is a it's a heartwarming story, but it's also a, a difficult story for me to tell that, you know, that week, one of our teen, teen volunteers, teen council members got hit by a car and died on her way to school. And as a group, the teen council chose to do, chose to do what I've, you know, without me prompting said, hey, V, can we donate all this money to help pay for their services? And to me, that's like, that's what I'm here for. It's like, can you make that right decision? Can you join together as a group? Can you do that? And that's like, that's where I get paid. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, V. Um, yeah, I, for, for me, um, I think I just, I enjoy helping people. And I think the biggest thing that, um, I've helped people do is sort of just just like sign up to access our e-media and our ebooks and stuff like that. And it's usually like a much older crowd who um, aren't really familiar with 
how to use their phones or use their tablets. So they come in and they require like a lot of time, just kind of like walking them step by step through the process. It's it's a little different at the branches where um, we don't have like a place to send them for them to get that help. At Central Library, we do have those like a spe specific location where we can say, hey, go to this department. They'll help you out. They can uh, kind of walk through, through that process. But at the branches, there's like, we, we just have like a, uh, like, like a, a more immediate connection with our patrons. And um, yeah, just helping people access, like just jump into the modern world, sign up, get, get their emails. Um, access our ebooks and e media stuff like that. I don't know. It's really rewarding. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, the rewarding is helping patrons at the library and even online. But most of it is when I have the opportunity to help the Latino community when they show up at the library and they cannot speak the language. So, and I am able to help them in our language, it is a reward for me, helping this community. That's wonderful. Thank you all. Oh, so emotional from your stories. Um, so another question, of course, is what are some of the challenges of working in a library? As I, as I mentioned right now is, for me, it was, the language when I started working at the library because it wasn't easy for me when I started my my career path because even when I had all the knowledge to do my work or my duties it wasn't easy for me to understand or understand the culture and because I was moving or coming from another country that where everything was different when I moved to LA, it was everything different. But despite that, I overcome and I am here. So I'm still learning and I am happy to be here. Yay, and Salvador, I know for you, um, you mentioned privately that um, you found a very supportive work environment when you first started with the library. Do you wanna talk more about that? What stood out to you? Sure, when I, when I look for this opportunity to work at a library or to work for the city of LA, it was through a word source. And they, they helped me to enroll me in this targeted local hire program. And they saw my, my curriculum and they recommended me to apply for, for a job in the city as an administrative clerk. And, and I accepted it. Then I was hired by the target, by the library department. And they, the staff was really helpful with me when the process was. They gave me a very warm welcome. Then they sent me to the branch that I had to do my training. My, it was a probation period for six months. I started at the Robertson branch and people over there, my coworkers, all the staff was very nice and very helpful with me, especially Al. I didn't know that we were in this program today together, but when I knew that I said, oh my God, I have to highlight this because he was so helpful with me, not just with my duties, but it, he was very helpful with me uh, in the language. He speaks Spanish and he was all the time uh, giving me advices on how to, or what to do to understand my duties. So uh, thank you so much for it. And, and that is pretty much all. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm getting so emotional again that I almost forgot the question was about challenges, not rewards, because that, that was just really beautiful. So maybe Al, I'm gonna pop it over to you. Oh, that was so sweet, Salvador. Thank you. Oh man, um, challenges. I think the biggest challenge is just we're we're dealing we're working with the public every day, and everyone you can think of comes into the library. Every class, every race. 
um, and every mood, right? So occasionally you'll have someone who comes into the library and they're obviously having a bad day. And um, they directed towards towards you, especially if you can't help them out with something. Like if, before we had um, we had fines, the fines, fines things have been removed. We no longer have that. So if you have your library card, return, come back to the library, check out books, get them library to go, do whatever. Um, but yeah, that that's probably the biggest challenge. Uh, there there is like a a like a sort of a danger element to that too, potentially. So, um, but we're 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 trained. We um, we uh, we have like our, our procedures, and I think we count a lot on our coworkers to to keep us safe and to have our backs. So um, it's it's a challenge, but it's not something that should turn you away from a career in librarianship. Yeah. go next. Um, so one of the challenges that I always find myself getting so frustrated with is, um, you know, we're information professionals, like we know how to find information. And so when we get stumped, when I get stumped, um, and I can't help somebody, and I know it's probably, you know, it's just something that I don't know. It's something that I don't know where to find. And it's, it's frustrating when they, when people leave without getting what they needed. Um, and then it's even worse when you find it after they've left. And so um, for me, that challenge is like, just, I don't know, like, oh, I'm always like storing information for the next time. Like, hopefully I'll get that question again. Um, so that's, that's one of my biggest struggles. It's like always wishing I can like answer everyone's question. Thank you. Um, so I saw a question earlier that wanted some clarification about, I think it was from Akila, about um, what educational background is required for the different jobs at the library. So we're just speaking broadly of the uh, messenger clerks versus admin clerks and librarians. Um, it would probably be good to clear that up before moving on. So Al, do you mind, since you've gone through a lot of these um, job changes recently, mm -hmm. if you could clarify what the educational requirements and degrees, if necessary, are? Yeah. Um, with with like a messenger, with, with the MC position, that isn't publicized anywhere. It's like branch specific. So your branch, like if, if you have like a local library, you can always call them or ask them um, once we open up in person um, if they're currently hiring for MCs. Um, the requirement for that, I think maybe just like, I don't even know if you need a high school degree for that. I think you still be in high school. Um, is that true or no? Yeah, okay. Um, but you are required to take a very, very short exam. It's like one page. It's super, super simple, super easy, like simple math questions, simple like decimal questions. Um, it doesn't take much work. I think you have like 15 minutes to take it. Uh, the administrative clerk exam that you can find online, you can do like a, like a Google search, um, LA City library job or administrative clerk library job. I'm sure there's, there's probably like a, a more, um, there's like a standardized, way, a, a standardized way to sort of find that information. But that requires, um, I think, maybe a high school degree, um, but does not require a college degree. Um, once you sign up for that exam, you have a few months to study, and there is supplemental information. There are books that you can borrow through the library that have um, test practice test exams as long as, as long as the uh, as long with the uh, answers so you want to kind of go through as many of those as you can to get familiarized with how the exams kind of work and time yourself so that once you go and take your exam you're prepared um, to answer every question within that like hour two hours that they give you can't quite remember how much time they give you for that it's a very challenging exam like I mentioned before and then you're given a score and based on that score you're then hired um, that score puts you on the list um, and when you're offered a position, it may not be at a library that um, is close to you at all. You may have to drive like 30 minutes, 40 minutes to an hour away just to get there. But after your probation period, which is six months, you can then, um, once the transfer sheet comes out, which is it's coming out kind of regularly now, I think it's coming out a few times a year, you can try to find a library closer to your house um, and then sign up to transfer. Now to transfer, you have to go through an interview. 
Um, so if you, you're not guaranteed a transfer just because he chose it. You have to interview for that position again, as if you're interviewing for that position for the very first time. So you have to make sure that you sell yourself really well. Um, everyone knows that you can do the job, but at that point, it's just about selling yourself to that particular um, branch or department that you want to transfer to. Um, to be a librarian, that does require a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in library information science. Um, once you acquire that degree, you go online, same, same process, you sign up for the, uh, you sign the application online. And I think shortly after that, you are interviewed. Actually, I think part of the application process is to write an essay, like a short essay. I think it was like maybe two, three paragraphs, something like that. It was super short. Um, it's not too difficult. If you're, if you're used to writing, it, it shouldn't take too long. It's, that's not really the hard part. Um, the hard part is the interview. During the interview process, you're asked um, a lot of questions that perhaps seem like, I, th I think the questions are geared towards um, sort of like, uh, they're asked to see if you have like the basic requirements to be a librarian. They ask you if, what kind of programs you've had, how do you measure success in a program? Um, that it's, it's basically like an interview with asking for your experience. And so coming directly from your a college, if you if you don't have any experience in libraries, that that that'll be very challenging to to ask in like an acceptable way. Um, but what you can do is while you are getting your MLIS degree, you can sign up for an internship. Definitely do that because that'll give you the experience that will sort of like bring your interview to that next level. Now the interview is based on like a, a score of one hundred, I believe. Um, the closer you get to 100, the better you are, you're higher on the list. So once the, the interviews start to happen for that position, you're more likely to get it because you'll be one of the first people who are interviewed. Um, I think a passing score is probably like over 70, over 80, something like that. But at that point, you're much lower on the list. They may get to you eventually or they may not and your score will expire and you'll have to interview again um, that's kind of the process that i'm going through at the moment um, my last interview i think i got like a 94 or something like that 95 which isn't very high it seems high but it's not um, but um, there, there was actually a hiring freeze because of covid so last summer i was expecting to interview for that position and i didn't get it so now my score has expired i'm applying again next week, I believe. Um, and then I'm just going to restart the entire process. I'm going to interview again, I'm going to get a new score. And then that's just the that that's just for your for your placement score. And then eventually you have to interview for a particular branch or department and that comes later. So the whole process takes a very, very long time. Thank you. And good luck, Al, on your next interview process. Thank you for sharing all of those details. Um, they change they, the Sometimes the, the requirements change, but one thing to be clear for the administrative clerk positions through the and the librarian positions through the city, if you go to the Los Angeles City Employment website, that's when you'll usually see the jobs. That's where you'll see the jobs that are available. And it is a, a lengthy process because it's a civil service exam um, and which comes with a lot of good benefits once you get that job. But um, so you do have to go through a fair number of steps in order to get there, including the written exam and an interview process. Um, okay, I know we're running out of time and uh, this kind of leads me to the next question, which is, are there, what are the opportunities? I mean, you've kind of exhibited to us all that, and V as well that you, and actually all of you have shown that you can move up um, within the Los Angeles Public Library. Are there any other um, examples of uh, job growth, um, other opportunities that the city of LA has offered you in the time that you've been an, an employee? Um, for me, I, I've um, intentionally chosen not to move up because I, like I said, I wanted to be at the same branch for 
generations. Um, but I have the freedom to use my creativity to make my job new and exciting whenever I feel like it. Um, so for me, I feel like our organization gives us, I mean, not everyone would agree, but I feel like for me, my the organization gives me the freedom to, um, to explore interests. Um, and I find that when I'm presenting something that's interesting to me, it's better. Um, so, you know, I don't, I'm not someone who's a gamer, so I don't do gaming programs, but I love bikes. So I do biking programs. Um, um, I love um, crocheting. So we hosted crochet programs, you know, so it's like you get the, you get the opportunity to do what you love. Um, and I find that when you have that, um, it's successful. It ends up being successful. That's very true. Did anybody else have anything to share? Yeah, there's a lot of like upward growth. Like um, I think that I was I was really impressed by that when I first started working at the library. There's just like all these, you just have to take the steps and you can continue to go up and up and up. Um, and you can also, like if you're an administrative clerk, you can, you don't have to remain with the library. You can go to a different department, a, a different, um, Oh, not not department, but like a different. Um, yeah, a different city department, city or even department. DWP. Yeah, yeah, DWP, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. right. There's like so many different options when you're an administrative clerk. Um, you can also be an LA, which is like a librarian assistant. It does not require a master's in library science, um, and you have like uh, tasks that kind of blend in between both. And you're also as a librarian assistant in charge of like administering tasks for the administrative clerks and messenger clerks, but it kind of varies from branch to branch. V? Sorry. Oh, did you want to say something? Or no? Mm -hmm. Okay, no. I, I was just going to say, yeah. So Al had mentioned transfer sheets. So once you're hired, once you're already working within the library and you've passed your probation period, then um, there's a lot of opportunities for internal uh, transfers. So like um, Anita is saying, if you're not necessarily someone who, who you've seen all the positions, you don't necessarily want to move directly up the vertical ladder. You can also move laterally and try out different jobs. So for instance, like I, I'm a YA librarian now, but I used to be a children's librarian. And I think it's really great that you have the opportunity in such a large system to try out different roles and you know it keeps things fresh and um and then yeah i don't know if anyone else has anything to add or lynn if you wanted to add anything i was just uh you know i'm i'm trying to read the post here about different library jobs but yeah if anybody wants to like look for library jobs like subscribe to your indeed you know you can look put library and then you'll get emails every week about different library jobs like within five miles or 10 miles or even 30 miles from your home or zip code. Show you that. Yeah, and also if you're definitely interested in becoming a librarian, if your end goal is librarian, um, I think a lot of us talked about it. Volunteer at a library. Get your foot in the door, get the necessary experience because apparently it's not the degree that gets you the job. It's also the connections and who you know. So yeah, and so definitely it's it's, your internship matters. Basically, um, networking, all that kind of like uh, joining these uh, CLA, uh, California Library Association, going joining American Library Association, and meeting people and meeting organizations that way. Thanks, V. So before we go into the Q and A with the audience, uh, I just want to throw out a kind of a fun question to debunk any myths out there. Um, since have since working in a library, are there any stereotypes of library workers, librarians or library workers that you would say, you know, that's definitely not true? <laughs> Something you wanna you wanna we're information professionals, so we want you guys to have accurate information. Is there anything? This is your chance to debunk <laughs> what what it is to be a librarian or to work in a library. Does anybody have anything? I see some smiles. Well, I'll say one thing that is true. I love shushing people. I just do. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love telling people to be quiet. <laughs> okay, maybe not. Maybe Anita is not our best representative on this front, but um, fair enough. Um, it's a lot of technology. 
if you don't like computers and you don't like helping, I mean, def definitely the helping people part, but if you don't like computers or you don't like databases or you don't like dealing with spreadsheets and that stuff, becoming a librarian is not for you. It's, it's, it's a lot of interfacing with like Google on steroids, I guess is my best answer. For it. it's, it's a lot of that. Thank you. Yeah, and I would like to share with you that your customer service skills uh, have to be good. You have to be good at it because if you are not good at it, don't think of being or in working at the library because um, working at the library, you need soft skills to work there. Yeah, you wear you wear many shoes. You're like a, a psychologist, a historian, liaison. You 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 um and and really what you're providing is a service. Like we we've we've expanded our services where like you can come to the library and sign up to get your high school degree, or you can get um help with immigration services. Um it's it's no longer just like, oh, here's the book, you're good to go. Um, we feel a ton of questions and we talk to a lot of people. So, yeah. Thanks, you guys. Um, I know we just barely touched, tackled the tip of librarianship and library work in general, um, but you guys did a great job kind of giving an overview and sharing your own experiences. So first of all, thank you so much for doing this. And I think we do have some questions. So from the audience. So I'm going to turn it over to um, Rosalind. Are you there? Okay, Rosalind is also, and Lynn will, would probably do a better job introducing her, but she's one of the amazing uh, volunteers at the Chinatown Branch Library. So she does have her foot in the door and has been getting <laughs> real experience working in the public library. So welcome, Rosalind. And if you see the questions, um, feel free to start reading and addressing them. Okay, so we'll start with uh, Gary has a question for Salvadora, and he asks, uh, do you feel that you have improved during your time serving the library community? Yes, I think I've been improving my language skills, but also my soft skills and working at the library. I think that made me a better person. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, yeah, and uh, Lila has a question for any of the, um, oh, or is here. Uh, what was the most challenging part of library school? I think that would be a great question for Al, since Al just finished. Yeah, I just finished. Yeah, I finished not, not too long ago. Um, for me, I think the biggest challenge was just working full time and also having to go home and do all my homework and reading and stuff. Um, you know, I, I, so I, I, got, I acquired my MLIS through San Jose State's online program, um, which has like its own sort of um it feels like menial tasks to 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 like justify a, like giving out the degree to people who go through that program a lot of it is um it's just busy work it's it's not it's not too challenging but it does require that you stay on time you complete your tasks and um and that you um interact with the rest of your classmates. Um, I think it's just, I think probably, probably the, most, the most challenging thing is that it's time consuming. Um, but if you were able to acquire your bachelor's degree, it's not going to like, it's not like getting uh, a chemical engineering master's or something. Okay, so it's not, it's not that challenging. It just requires a lot of time. Um, and some classes are really, really great. Um, but then like, like, like with every degree, you'll have classes that just feel like they're just there to sort of take your time and not really offer much in return. But it's just like 
with anything else. Yeah. Anita. Um, I'll say it was easy, uh, easy in the end. I realized how easy it was compared to other um, other master's programs probably, but I've always struggled with writing. Um, so the writing was very hard for me. Um, and the group projects were very challenging <laughs> and the public speaking was very challenging. Um, however, I'm glad that I had that challenge because our job consists of that so much. Um, so working in groups, public speaking, like I'm no longer afraid to speak in front of people at all. Like I don't have nervous, you know, panic attacks calling my, my dad going, how do I do this? Um, so it does, it for me, I felt like that challenge did prepare me for the profession. Um, so I'm glad I didn't give up. I think librarianship is not just reading books all the time. I think one of the things you have to do when you step back is when we, I talked about the technologies that's required, but you also have to realize it's really learning about how to organize things and seeing that how you organize things and how books get cataloged or how books get put away is, a, you know, it's different from what a bookstore does. It's like, we're trying to make it so that any, that any person can find whatever they need if they just ask the right question. And that's a huge like philosophical, like kind of like cuts to the chase. We believe in that if you have a question or you have an information need, we should be able to find it. And that only really, really works if we actually have a systemic and like a systematic way of, 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 of organizing information. So if you think about like looking for a book that is about um, forest and, you know, uh, um, putting in new oak trees in a forest in Tennessee. Like how we're gonna, how are we gonna find that book? You can try to Google all those terms, but there are smarter ways to organize these things. And that's basically what you're learning in librarianship. And that same sort of skill set becomes uh, very useful if you're inter inter in interested in using um, uh, UX. What is UX? What's the uh, English word for UX? Or how to organize websites to the information, that stuff. User experience, thank you. I'm like, that's, I mean, Future V might go into UX. That's what I'm saying. It's like, what? It's about you know giving people access to information and how wonderful it is to not to be able to have it so that people are able to do so. Thank you. To just to add on to V and back to L about what the experience of um, the library school programs are like. Um, if you go to like UCLA, for instance, it is more theoretical, kind of what V is speaking to. So you do go into a lot more theory. There's a lot of writing. Um, although I did my program about a decade ago, I would not say it was super easy. Um, it did require being there in person, so it wouldn't have been possible to work full time in the library, say, as a clerk while you're going to school. But um, it was challenging and rewarding, but it was definitely not easy. And you do have to do a if not a thesis, then a project, a final project that where you still defend it to a panel of um, professors and they will tear you down and you'll feel like, why did I do this? I want to just help the public. Why did you have to rip me to shreds? But at least you get a second chance if that happens to you. And yes, it did happen to me. So, um, but it's worth it. Okay, yeah, those are great answers. Okay, so our next question will be, who inputs and Q QCs the data on the LAPI website? When you purchase books or DVDs, who uploads the necessary data for the patrons? Ooh, this is a tough one. Do you, do you know the answer? I know the answer. <laughs> I know Are we being graded? I know. Who I mean, is that? I mean, <laughs> Rosal, do you really want a serious answer? Because I can answer that question. It's just... It, it, Oh. Go ahead, go ahead. I think you should. Okay, so remember I had, I, I was not always running a makerspace. So I was also previously um, a book selector for, so I was a, back in when I was working with teen services, I was a book selector for graphic novels, for teen graphic novels and comic books and stuff. So what happens? 
in how many minutes do I have to explain this? You want me two minutes? Give me two minutes. Okay, all right. So basically, there are three ways in which a book gets listed and in there. Okay, one, patron suggestions. That's you guys telling us what it is you want. Number two, um, book reviews. So let's say you have, um, you get a, a book review inside the New York Times, you get, we also have um, proprietary magazines such as Publishers Weekly or School Library Journals. We read those things, we pull those ideas out, we put those listed. And the third thing is the person who's doing the selecting, what research that persons do in order to select the books. So you get this, you know, you get the selection list. Then you get the librarian who looks at the selection list, picks out which ones, like at LAPL, we have librarians who pick out those books, okay? As they get, so that's that. So then as the books get selected, um, there are librarians, they're called catalogers. Remember when I said that how information gets organized? That's their problem, yeah. So the catalog, so librarians, those catalogers are in, responsible for two things. One, descriptive cataloging in which they describe what the book is and also, um, I forget what the word, the other kind of cataloging, okay? And basically they put that information up. There's a huge database that ties it all together. And that's how it happens. I think I did that. That was great. Oh well, yeah, so, yeah. That was wonderful. And I, I, I love catalogers. I would have been a cataloger if I wasn't a teen librarian. <laughs> All right, go that ahead. That was challenging class was cataloging. That's why I'm like, yes, it's their problem. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Rosalind. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Uh. So. Uh. The next question is. Heavy metal and libraries are, is a weird combination for many patrons. Is there anything about working for the library that surprised you? No, because we collect books about everything. <laughs> I mean, that's uh, that's our job is to not is to be open to suggestion and open to whatever new trends that happen out there. Has so, there been anything that, oh, sorry, I was going to also add to that. Has there been anything that's that surprised you from a physical item that's been returned to, to a library, like something that a patron left behind that you're comfortable sharing on this? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, a man comes into the library um, wants to return a book that was burned and he was very friendly. So we're like, well, how'd the book get burned? And he goes, well, I wet it because I took a bath and I was reading the book in the bathtub. So I put it in the microwave to try to dry it off. That was surprising. But you know, he's not far off, right? Cause uh, isn't that like the, don't we have really large specialized microwaves to dry books? Not us, but <laughs> companies. I understood no. his logic, but it must have been like <laughs> oil or something. I don't know. But. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I don't know if there's something that I've been really surprised by, but I am fascinated by the way the library just seems to operate functions like an organism. I'm not sure how everything gets done. Like we have our IT department, which is like the backbone of the library. Um, we have like the people who are taking care of the shipments. Like how do we get books from, how do we figure out like the logistics to get a book from a, a particular branch to one that's closer to where the patron lives. Um, so there's like all these all this like all these networks that exist that um i think we, the, we're starting there's there's we're starting to learn more about like we have like internal blogs that kind of highlight these different departments and different sections of library um but i think that's that's really what what fascinates me most about the about our system Okay, then, uh, so to move on, uh, the <laughs> next question is for An Anita, uh, can you tell us, some, can you tell us about the Book Bite project? Sure, um, so in 2014, um, our library foundation was offering mini grants for um, ideas, I think they called it ideas mini grants, um, and so I had the idea to um, write a grant, which I had never done before. So that remember, remember I said writing was not my strong suit, um, but I had the idea and the passion to write this grant to create a um, library branded um, cargo bike or cargo trike to take um, and give free books to people in the community, um, specifically to kids at schools um, and just wherever I found people. And so um, I was awarded the grant and um, 
we got our first LAPL book bike and it's been all over the place. Um, it's been in music videos and all over um, the city of LA um, at events. Um, we've hosted community bike rides. We've given away tens of thousands of books. Um, it's just like, I feel like it's my major contribution to LAPL because that was like my one good idea. And I'm like, okay, I'm done. Hope this, everybody else has good ideas. Um, so yeah, that's, um, that's the book bike. It's fun. <laughs> Is there a link or something we can, if for anyone who's interested, I know you've been on, appeared on news shows and things. Yeah, so yeah people can see more Google, about it. Um, Google LAPL book bike, um, or you can check out our Instagram page. I think the Instagram page probably has most of our story as far as through the years, what, um, what we've been up to. And now there's three or four LAPL book bikes um, since that first one, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It sounds great. <laughs> yeah. She's going around. Okay. So yeah, the next question. Oh, it's a long one. <laughs> so uh, it's thank you. Oh, so first they want to say thank you librarians for your time today. Uh, some really great info to know about uh, how you all come to your current positions. And this question is for <laughs> Ms. Leonard and Ms. <laughs> Jessica. Uh, and they say you both do a fantastic job with Career Day Wednesdays, and they wanted to know some backstory or behind the scenes of how this all came together uh, during COVID. And how did you choose or find the professions staff speakers featured? How did you find one another? What has been your favorite part of about this program? <laughs> Well, I'll just start to say that I found Lynn through a spreadsheet of all things. When the pandemic began, we hadn't met in person and I just, I didn't even recognize her name, but I saw that she had a teen council and they were meeting pretty regularly. And I was working with a teen council who was also meeting regularly. And I just thought, hey, let's, you know, these are weird times. Let's like maybe t see if our group teens want to get together. And then we ended up talking and Lynn presented me with the idea for career day. And I mean, I'd say the rest is history, but Lynn, the rest is history. <laughs> um, thank you for your question, Ed and, and Roslyn. Um, and yes, I agree with everything Jessica has said here. Um, so career day came about during the pandemic. Uh, I think I was at home and I was listening to a lot of our teens, um, you know, talk, you know, share their stories of grief and uh, they were nervous, they were anxious because they couldn't go back to school and a lot of them, uh, they were stressed out. They, they wanted to, um, they, want, they, they kept on coming to teen council because that was the only way for them to connect with other people. And I just asked them for some ideas and um, I would talk about running all the time because I'm a runner myself. I'm an LA Marathon ambassador and I lead a, a run club in Koreatown called the Koreatown Run Club with a lot of amazing people. And uh, I just started, I had this idea, put it together and then asked Jessica if she wanted to join in on this fun program idea. And she said, yes. And then next thing you know, we started hosting weekly programs. Uh, with different uh, career topics with my run club friends every single week since April of 2020. So yeah, we've, it's been super fun. And a lot of our teens here and also adults um, who may be uh, interested, interested in exploring careers of uh, love coming to this type of program just to connect with others and get inspired. So yeah, thank you for your question. Favorite part of this program? meeting learning about the backstory behind every single uh, guest speaker because I think a lot of times you know when you meet people you say oh what do you do for work but then you don't really understand why they got into the profession or what was their inspiration and uh, I always find it so moving and it, it, it makes it makes me more humble for, to be able to do this type of program because I got to learn so much more about you know these amazing people uh, through this program so yeah, thank you for that. And thank you to all of our guest speakers <laughs> for just being with us and uh, for, you know, writing this out with us every single week. So yeah, thanks. Hope that answers your question. Uh, yeah, anything else? <laughs> I think that's our last question there. And uh, thank you so much, Ed. So I just want everyone to know, um, you know, this program is, it's, 
it's been a lifeline for a lot of our teens and even for Jessica and myself. And yes, it's true. We haven't, we have not met. We met through Zoom and uh, I love working with Jessica because she gets me and, um, you know, we're both super laid back and, you know, we kind of just go with the flow and everything just always works out, which is so great. And, um, you know, being that she's all the way on the West side and I'm all the way here in Northeast, it's, it's just, it's just been so crazy how we were able to get our communities to kind of come together and now we work on a lot of different projects together through the internet and we still haven't met in person which is I always find it so amazing so thanks Jessica a uh, question for the guests this is from Ken um have you ever hosted out a club have you ever hosted out a club suggested by teens that has now become an interest or hobby for example hosting anime club even though it wasn't in, in interest to you before? Uh, I haven't done that, but how about you, V? I think- I've you done that, I've definitely done that. I mean, I didn't get into graphic, I only got into manga because I, over at Lincoln Heights, basically when you're a librarian, part of the thing is that you have to serve your needs your community. And at that time it was like fruits baskets, all the, it's like all these manga titles. So I just got really, really good at manga titles and, and anime. So that's how it happened. That's how I, yeah. No, no, you learn whatever your community needs and anime, manga. I don't have that muscle as much as I used to, but I could probably still, arm, I probably still more, I might probably still know more than most of you, probably. Don't test me. I agree. Oh my goodness. Yeah, a lot of times it's like you, you know, you, you want you have all these ideas to run these great programs, but then if your community, you know, doesn't want it and they want something else, you figure it out. You learn it until you get it and you run that program because that is what the community needs and wants. So yeah, definitely always, always serving the community to see what it is that they need and um, providing that service to them. All right. I think we are towards the end of our program here. And uh, I just wanna take a moment here to thank every single one of you for just being here with us today, all of our amazing guest speakers for sharing their background and their backstory on how they got into their careers and their professions. And then, um, you know, we do have a, a survey for you to complete if you have a moment or when you do have a moment, please click on the link down there that uh, Jessica has provided in the chat box. And uh, for any team that completes the survey, we will be raffling off a coloring book from the Octavia Lab. So you can see V holding it up right over there. And this session is being recorded. So we will make it available on our YouTube page in the next few weeks. And yes, it is to, for teens, but you are, we would still welcome everyone to complete the survey no matter what. It's just the coloring book that we're gonna raffle that one off to the teens. Yeah, any last? moment any last words from our guest speakers before we say goodbye to the world no just thank you for all the questions this was really fun to get to know um all of you guys too so yeah uh, for those of you guys who are volunteering the library i deeply deeply appreciate people who give back to the community it means a lot to me thank you al or salvadora anything yes i want to thank you you all for having me on here today and just I want to tell the teens that there are there is more than one way to get into the library you are looking for a position to work in thank you Salvador Al yeah I think there's actually like a program right for for teens to get into the library it's like a summer program summer work program I'm not sure if we're offering it this summer yes, yes they are they oh, are, are? Oh, okay great yeah um so if you're looking for a summer job definitely check in with your local librarians Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Al. Thank you so much. 